Hey guys, I'm Josh Wolf, and uh, MagicCraft.io was born out of a desire that you know I had to teach my son how to program, and other people you know around me who were passionate about teaching kids coding, and so you know we discovered that kids are passionate about Minecraft, so we thought, hey, what if we could take that natural passion for Minecraft and align that with our desire as parents and as programmers to teach a new generation of programmers and so magiccraft.io is the result of that. So we're a small team of passionate people that, that do weekly sprints. We do a sprint and we deliver an MVP every week at Brisbane Square Library at the Brisbane Coda Dojo program. Super pumped for what we got happening today at Coda Dojo in the Magic Craft world. Got some great spells. This is John Dillon, he's the, he's the, the author of the Magic Craft World and the server administrator yeah. during the Magic Craft Woo. session now. <laughs> okay, it's, it's daytime but I'm underwater. Um, so I do slash MV. Yeah, MV, yeah. So, yeah, MV, um, for multiverse. Mm -hmm. uh, space TP, so teleport. Okay. Space, um, and then the world. So you're trying to get to the Stone Guard, you're trying to get to the uh, tutorial level. Tutorial, which is... Uh, Ironically um, called space, testing. It's called testing, it's a space testing, and it should just tell the point of the uh, main spawner. Okay, sick, I'm here. Yeah. Awesome. Non-stop, lots of teleporting because kids couldn't get different places. The um, healing and god mode and stuff weren't enabled everywhere. In the end had to go along and uh, hack it so that the entire global settings were all like disabled all power. And then of course you can't change the magic craft stuff because I don't have access to that and then kids started messing around there. So yeah, cool. <laughs> great time. This guy, this guy is the Wizard of Oz in the Wizard of Oz MVP. <laughs> the design of this level, which kind of reminds me of Doom, if you ever played Doom back in the day, the original one, uh, is that the kids come in here and they go through a kind of a linear tutorial level. And what we wanted to do here is we wanted to create for them a problem and an intense desire to solve the problem. And we set this level up in such a way that the only way to solve the problem is by casting a spell. So we created a world with, you know, like particular rules of physics and, and, um, and design. So pretty simple, leads them through here. They're doing a bit of exploring, they're kind of checking things out, like discovering in the world, banging into each other. turned off the ability for you know the players to like attack each other or anything like that so it's pretty linear it takes them through here and then they come to a point a bit of a scenic route here if you fall down here you can come back up these stairs and we go through here in the halls of the kings and this is a we do have some rules you'll need to follow. Be cool above all else. This is a level designed by John Dillon. No rude or bad behavior. <laughs> cool. We should put no swearing. Respect all players and staff. We're going to have to put no swearing, I think. We had kids like, some kids have got a pretty radical vocabulary. Now time to start learning how to cast spells. <laughs> <clears throat> Not that I mind, but I just don't want other people's kids coming back having learned new words that their parents would rather they not have learned. So here's where, or patterns of speech, so communication, here's this area here, kind of reminds me of that thing in the Death Star where Luke and Leia have to swing across. Kind of a bit of a Super Mario sort of progression here to get up, 
to that final point there, which is where you get out. Now down here in this tunnel, you get teleported, and if you go up there, you get teleported back to the start. Or I think during the actual MVP today delivery, um, John set it up so that if you fall down there, you teleport back to this point because they were getting, you know, pretty had enough of having to walk all the way back through. Oh, I didn't even know this was here. What's this? Free food. Okay, so we can get some food. So uh, here it just looks like you're going to jump to get out, but you can't. Your normal jump doesn't have enough power to get you out there. So then what happens is you fall down here and then you're back on the drawbridge. Now, your jump doesn't do it. And then so the kids are trying and trying. They come to the conclusion that it's impossible. You can't do it. And so then we tell them it is possible, but you've got to find something hidden in here. And then they find this. So this is the spell that they need to use to get out to function in our Magic Craft API. And, and we've named our Magic Craft API functions after Latin terms. Kind of a Harry Potter sort of theme. Um, maybe teach the kids a little bit about language at the same time. Exalto, um, which means I jump. I jump out even uh, in Latin. And I think I actually, at the moment, the, the function is exaltus. So the kids got a little bit confused with that, but they got through it. This is a magic spell here. So they discovered that, <clears throat> and then they're still ca captivated in here. So then we take them to the spell book. I'm here with uh, Kyle Lure, who's the author of the Magic Craft <laughs> plugin for Minecraft. Yeah. It's working today, huh? Yeah, it's How working. It's good. It's amazing. They're actually doing something. They're, they, they've jumped. They, they're tossing other people now, and we're sorted. Sweet. They're excited. They're really excited. <laughs> awesome. You made that happen, man. Yeah. Look, and this is where the kids get to create the spells that they use. This is how we do it. So we say we're going to bring some magic to the situation, you know, changing or violating the rules of physics uh, or normality in the world. Where do we get the magic from? We get it from magiccraft.io. We're going to create a function, which we're going to call jump and then we're going to invoke or we're going to inv magic invoke jump and then the kids can click on run and magic happens so it's kind of test driven development we've designed it to give them immediate feedback at each step so here we're going to call the exaltus function and I am going to change that to Exalto. John had it right. Magic happens, you jump with some power. So we have them go back in the game, they try it, it doesn't work. We say what's missing, what's missing is some power. You jump with one power. So, so the instructions clearly say jump with one power, and so what we end up with is something like that. <laughs> Any particular reason for that? Uh, no, I just want to fall from a high place. More is better, huh? More yeah. More is definitely better. No, it uh -huh. We have this up on the projector. Kids are copying it. I go around and have a look. First guy I look at has put five. Next guy has put 250. And then the next guy has put something like that. <laughs> so um, luckily we have bounds checking in that function. <clears throat> parameter sanitization. So, you know, you create a um, four, let's say, and you jump with power four. You click on save, it sends it to the server and you can then invoke it in Minecraft. Let's have a look here, Minecraft. Back to the game. So I can cast, there's this thing with Minecraft, if anyone knows, please, knows how it happens, please let me know, where sometimes you can't hit, the C's not working. 
Luckily, we have spell. Or let's have a look. No, it's not in my buffer. So spell. So spell or cast both work. Jump. Nothing really happens. So what we then do is we we factor this out to a variable. And this is kind of a, a recurring pattern that we teach in the beginning, just to get the, their heads around how this works, a variable. So we've taken this number con numerical constant, turned it into a variable, and then what we do is we refactor that into a function parameter like this. So it's gone from some power when there was nothing in there to one to four, and now again back to some power. But the difference is, of course, now we have a function or, or spell uh, which takes an argument. So you've got a vi basically a variable power jump here. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. Back to the game. So now you can cast, it's going to work that time, cast jump two. Ding! And so you see like that. So the idea is now here, that's probably a bit much, let's try cast jump one, let's see what that does. One was enough there for sure. So you do a bit of your Super Mario type thing. And um, kids being who they are, oh, let's, oh, let me show you what happens if you jump too high here. Let's jump four. Ding! We go all the way up. Nope, I'm not going to jump out there. Let's try that again like this. Um, five. Oh. We'll jump from here. Jump five. Cast jump five. Go forward a bit more. Cast jump five. So John organized it so that you fall down or you go up, you teleport back to here. But what some kids discovered, some of them tried this and tried to get the numbers. We thought the kids would have to work out what number to use would be the best one, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but somehow, some kids figured out that you could do this. I'm going to cast that, and then I'm going to go here. They figured out, did they cast it from here? No, they cast it from down here. And, oh. This is the open world nature of uh, Minecraft, you know, that you don't know what people are going to do. Space, jump three, and jump. And go forwards at the same time, and you do it. He's So they figured out they could cast it from there and jump all the way up. And so that's what they did. Congratulations, you completed the tutorial level, you're now free to uh, come to the School of Magic, which is hosted here. This is the School of Magic, Stone Guard. Uh, we had Hogwarts, but in the, the first week where we had everything up and running, we had a lightning spell that we gave the kids, and uh, several of them used it to burn the school down. So now we're, we, made, we made the new school out of stone. Let's try casting that spell again. Woo! <laughs> it's kind of cool. Um, maximum power I think is 4.9 anything over that causes an exception so we bounded it at that point so there you go and this is something we didn't think kids would would do and this is what they discovered to do was <laughs> they just continually um, cast the spell and flew up into the air and then one enterprising young lad um, modified the spell itself and, re and saved it. Oh, here I come back. Whoa! So what he did was he modified the spell. This is the amazing thing about working with kids, working with software, working with MVPs. What he did was this. He did that. So a single invocation, he managed to rocket people, accelerate accelerate um, 
himself out and as you saw I got kicked from the server if I went too high. Well, you know, today we taught them another spell um, which is toss. We would have called it throw but throw is a JavaScript reserved word so it was toss and then you gave the player's name and the magic function for that is yakta which is um, again Latin for throw and in English we get the word eject from that so you're going to throw or toss or eject this um, player um, so we're going to invoke the toss spell and think you throw someone and so what he did was he copied that like this so it basically accelerated the person up into the air until they got kicked from the server and then he went around casting it on every person he could get his hands on um, so they were all getting kicked uh, and you know they started chanting kill sandbox win who's that was the username that he was using it what did he change the spell to do that? I think so. <laughs> but he made it easy as well. Dark side mage. <laughs> We're going to do some defensive magic for next week. <laughs> Kids had a great time today running this. So that's basically how the thing works, right? Um, let me see if I've got toss enabled for myself here. I might cast toss and I'll th throw it on myself. Yep. So you can see there, rather than just going straight up, I went sideways. So what toss does is it does the same thing, toss cedar party, and then we'll try. So slash up, slash up, and get out into the open, do it out here. Um, I guess with a timeout, we could simulate flying with this. But you can see it, it's a random. And then today we gave one um, of the students the ability to toss all of the players at once. So we're going to introduce different things like, um, you know, levels of magic, um, what's possible and not possible. So. It's about creating an engaging world for the kids and, you know, engaging kind of games, a gameplay dynamic that's balanced and fun and requires them to learn essential programming skills in order to be able to access the different kind of abilities in the world. And that, folks, is Magic Craft. No! <laughs> Jumping too much far. Try it again.